Hello, welcome back to History of Wine and the Vine. I'm Emily Kate. So this week, we're going to continue our Have a Drink With series, um, and we're going to be having a drink with Cicero. So this means you're going to be going back to ancient Rome um, and seeing what it might be like to share a drink. So first off, if we were in ancient Rome, we would be having a drink um, at the Convivium. Now this is similar um, and oftentimes grouped together with the Greek Symposium, where last week we had a drink with Plato. I suggest that you go watch that. Um, and essentially it's, it's kind of a little bit unfair that they get lumped together because they were very different. So the symposium was kind of a drinking affair where you would have had a meal prior to the drinking. Um, and the convivium is like an enormous, great big banquet where there would be a ton of things going on, um, but there would be food being served and different kind of wines paired with the food which is wonderful. Um, so um, there would be a lot of entertainment, like mock gladiator battles and all kinds of gymnasts and of course dancing and music. Um, it was quite the spectacle. And the actual kind of makeup of who was there would be very different. So in the symposium, it was kind of all people of the same class structure and it would have been kind of elites and whatnot. And with the convivium, uh, the Romans were fine with inviting for instance, if somebody was a business person, their clients or um, people of all different social statuses, um, which is kind of nice that everyone was included. Um, women were also included um, at a much higher rate at the convivium than they were at the symposium. Um, so the differences don't stop there. Um, there was, like I said, everything was kind of paired with food. So under the rule of Emperor Tiberius, much to Pliny's dismay um, later on, they actually kind of created this craze of aperitifs. So actually drinking wine without having any food yet um, in your stomach. And this definitely split people. Some people loved this and some people thought that it was just heinous. Um, but that was kind of how things would start off. Then you would have hors d'oeuvres, which is just blows my mind that they were having hors d'oeuvres. Um, and I have kind of like a list of some of the sample hors d'oeuvres that they would have served here. Um, they would have served salty fish, um, pig's feet, hard boiled eggs, um, and stuffed artichokes. And I've also heard of like, sausages and all kinds of different things being served. Um, and so these were the hors d'oeuvres and obviously they were all very salty and they actually paired them with sweet wine. So they paired them with mulsum, which is kind of like mead. Um, and this was just like very sweet wine with honey in it. So you had this very sweet wine paired with these salty snacks, which is amazing. Um, and then next up you would have either a fish or a chicken or a meat dish. Um, and that would be kind of like your main course and then you might have some sort of um, custard or fruit for dessert and these would all be paired with wines that were kind of that would go with the meal with what you were having um, now an interesting thing to think about is i know we discussed in the um have a drink with plato series we discussed how everybody would kind of have the same amount of dilution of their wine um, so they would mix their wine with water in a big crater um, and in the ancient convivium, it's actually a little bit different. So they would have the, the crater and people would be able to go and kind of ladle out their wine. Um, but the thing was, they also had something else on the table called an althepsa. And the althepsa, I actually get a picture here. The althepsa was used, yes I do. This is an althepsa. The althepsa would have been used um, to heat water. So not only, um, were you mixing wine and water, you were mixing like different temperatures. So you could put snow, which they got from the tops of mountains. Um, you could put snow in your wine and make a wine slushy. Um, or you could put hot water in your wine and make kind of a um, warm wine treat if it was the winter. Um, so everything was done in the cup. Um, and that's very different from the symposium where everybody would be having the same um, dilution here, much like it was a very different um, audience of who would be kind of in attendance. You would also have everybody could have their own mixture of water and wine um, from the althepsa. So they would go and get their wine and then they would kind of use um, the water to dilute it to taste, so to speak. 
Um, so definitely lots of differences within um, the symposium and the convivium. After the convivium, there would be something called the commissatio, and the commissatio was much more of just purely a drinking bout than um, the convivium was because there would be um, less mixing of the wine, so more neat wine, and there would be um, fewer kind of opportunities to be eating. You would mostly just be drinking and kind of reveling and um, having a lot of fun. So I hope this gave you a good idea of what it might be like to have a drink with Cicero and be transported back to ancient Rome. Um, if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe because next week we'll be doing a different civilization and a different have a drink with uh, episode. So I will see you then. Cheers!